morning and welcome to the Tuesday, March 23rd, 2021 Board of County Commission meeting. The meeting will be called to order. Commissioner Pickens. Thank you, Chairman Harvey. Um, I just wanted to take a moment uh, before our invocation and our pledge just to, to honor. We'll have a moment of silence in honor of, of the two of the finest gentlemen I've ever met in my life uh, that passed away this month from Putnam County, South Putnam, actually Wallaca. Um, the first person is Mr. Willie Washington, um, just a true gentleman, a family man, and a servant to Putnam County. Uh, Mr. Washington was the first African-American deputy in the Putnam County Sheriff's System. Um, he sat on the city council, uh, not consecutively, but from roughly 1968 um, to the time of his passing. There were a few times where he was not on the council, well over 20, 25 years. Uh, he was the chief of Wallaca for a period of time and just a true gentleman. The passing of Mr. Washington is passing of an era of somebody of his caliper. Um, like I said, he was a true gentleman in every sense of the word. I can't say that, and I grew up with his children, uh, went to school with them. I can't say that I ever saw him to where he was, had a bad attitude or was in a bad mood. He was always positive. And I'd like to recognize his daughter-in-law, Miss Pam Washington, who's in the audience. Pam, if you would stand, please. Um, <laughs> Pam works in the planning and zoning department and has for, for over 20 years. Uh, the second person, and this just happened Sunday, uh, mayor Sands, Gordon Sands, who's longtime mayor of Wallaca, uh, passed away Sunday after a brief illness. Um, and we're lucky to have uh, later on Mr. Jamie Watts, who's the newly elected mayor of Wallaca here. But Mr. Gordon Sands did a lot for Wallaca. Uh, he was probably the king of securing grants to get certain things done from the waterways to, to different projects, and he will truly be missed. And he was a true gentleman also. So I'd just like to say those words. And, and before we ask uh, Commissioner Adams Act to give the invocation, if we could have a, just a short moment of silence and order in these two fine gentlemen. Mr. Adams. Dear Lord, thank you for blessing us with the presence of these two men in our community for the, the many years that they served as mayor, as police officer, as committee man. Um, please, please allow them to be next to you for eternity that we may see them again when our passing, when our time comes to fruition. Um, thank you for everything that we give the opportunity to ourselves, to the people in this community to, to serve and to be a light for others. Um, and please allow us to reach out to anyone in need in, our, in this time. In God's name I pray, amen. Amen. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Pickens, first for that wonderful tribute, and it's not nearly enough, but it, it's what we can do today, and we appreciate you and your heart and, and what God has laid upon your heart. And Commissioner Adams, that thank you for the prayer today. Um, gentlemen, the next item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes as stated in the agenda. Move approval. A proper motion by Commissioner Turner. I'll second. Proper second by Commissioner Pickens. Any further discussion on this motion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, like sign, the ayes have it. Next is our presentations, and I believe Commissioner Pickens has the first one. Thank you, Chairman Harvey. Um, I'd like to welcome the newly elected mayor of Wallaca, uh, Mr. Jamie Watts, to come forward. Um, Jamie is a household name in Putnam County. Um, he's the son of Bill Watts, who's a former county commissioner. Uh, he operates Watts uh, Funeral Home and Crematorium. And uh, Jamie has served on the Wallaca Town Council for a number of years with 
Mayor Sands and also Mr. Willie Washington. And um, just excited uh, about uh, his election and working with him in the future and what he'll bring uh, his talents and uh, energies to the town of Olaka. And so Jamie, welcome. And, Thank uh, you. Thank you, Commissioner Pickens. Um, Chairman Harvey, it's always good to see you. I wanted to come this morning to the Board of County Commissioners. I know each and every one of you know me, but I wanted to come here with the, and address the collegiate body and kind of introduce <clears> myself <throat> formally. And I am very excited about the town of Olaka. We've got some really great things that's going to be going on down there that's not only going to help the town of Olaka, but the county of Putnam as a whole. We've got some new development going on in our in our River Ridge um, the subdivision, which used to be Wallaca Phase Two. We have six spec homes that are being built down there. And I know overall for Putnam County, six homes doesn't sound like a lot for the little town of Putnam or Wallaca. That's a that's pretty good. We've got the Old Palms, which is River View. They're getting ready to build homes in there. We just approved the docks, the floating docks down there. And then Mr. Morris has got the new. Uh, development there at the Floridian Club that we're really excited about. So we've got some growth that we're going to see in the town of Wallaca and the county of Putnam and, and South Putnam and we're really excited about that. So didn't come to ask for anything today. I just wanted to come out and introduce myself. Um, I'll get with you Commissioner Pickens and we'll see what we can do down in our area but I um, just want to let you know that we're here. Uh, we want to support you any way that we can and we're looking for a, a good partnership between the two of us. I'm really excited about being the mayor of Wallachia, I've been on the council for 11 years and learned a lot under Mayor Sands. And you're right, Commissioner Pickens, he was the king of grants. And I've got some big shoes to fill in that regard. But um, I'm just excited. We're going to see Wallachia grow and change. And I'm excited that I can be a part of that. So um, again, thank you for letting me come out today and to speak to you. And um, we look forward to working with you and the county of Putman as we, as we move everything forward and enrich the lives of everyone in Putnam County. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, next on our agenda, Mayor, thank you for coming. It was really nice to see you today. <clears throat> next on our agenda is Marianna Cotter and Christy Gillis, uh, CDS Family and Behavioral Services, Child Abuse Prevention Proclamation. If you'll come to the front, I'll meet you there, and Commissioner Turner will read the proclamation. This proclamation is named the Child Abuse Prevention Month in Florida Proclamation 2021-015. Whereas Florida's bright future depends on the healthy development of its children, and whereas ad adverse childhood experiences, including the abuse and neglect of children, can cause severe and costly consequences for children, family, and society as a whole, and whereas every child has a right to a safe, healthy, and happy childhood where they are educationally and developmentally on track, and whereas such, or excuse me, research shows that parents and caregivers who have support systems and know how to seek help in times of trouble are more resilient and better able to provide safe environments and nurturing experiences for their children, and whereas it is, their vital, it is vital that individuals, businesses, schools, and community organizations make children a top priority and take action to support the physical, social, emotional, and educational development and competency of all children. And whereas during the month of April, Child Prevention Abuse Florida, in coalition with the Governor's Office of collaboration with the Governor's Office of the Adoption of Child Protection and the Florida Department of Children and Families and the Ounce of Prevention Fund of Florida implements Pinwheels for Prevention. And whereas Pinwheels for Prevention is a statewide coordinated campaign aimed to increase awareness of child abuse prevention efforts by encouraging healthy child development, positive parenting practices, and community support, and whereas the blue and silver pinwheel displays in this campaign symbolize the health and the happiness of the children of all, that all children deserve, 
whereas Child Abuse Prevention Month is an important opportunity to urge all Floridians to engage in activities that strengthen families and communities and that provide the opt optimal environment for healthy child development. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Putnam County Board of County Commissioners do hereby proclaim support to all observing the April 2021 as <coughs> Child Abuse Prevention Month done, ordered, and adopted this 23rd day of March 2021. I move this proclamation. Second. Thank you, Mr. Turner. We have a proper motion by Mr. Turner. A second by Mr. Rawls. Is that what I heard? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Rawls. Any further discussion on the matter? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed like <clears throat> the ayes have it. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to have you come up and take a picture. Okay. As stated, April is Child Abuse Prevention Month. It's a time to celebrate the good things our communities do in order to promote healthy child development, support families, and help prevent child abuse and neglect. Some of the things that we have going on in Putnam County um, in the month of April, Putnam County Courthouse will be lighting up blue, which we're very excited as well as we are planning a food drop that will be on April 10th at um, Palatka High School, where families will be not only be able to get food, but also be able to get prevention materials as well. Um, I just wanna let um, the other agencies introduce themselves because again, it is a community effort to prevent child abuse. <laughs> Hi, Mariana Cotter. And Excuse me, and I'm with uh, CDS Behavioral and Family Services. Thank you. I'm Nicole Heiss, and I'm with the uh, Child Protection Team and Children's Advocacy Center. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Karina Rodriguez, and I'm with the Lee Conley House. I'm Jackie Weber. I'm the Program Administrator for the Department of Children and Families. Thank you very much. Thank you. Would y'all come up and line up right here, and we'll get some pictures taken. We'll make y'all look bad. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's really <laughs> sad. <laughs> oh, I guess I'm the fat shrimp. <laughs> You're the jumbo shrimp. <laughs> Commissioner Rawls. Ladies, I just want to thank you for coming up here today. Um, Christy, hang on. Mr. I, Rawls would like to say. Oh, I want to thank you all for coming up. Um, I've been working with the Public Safety Coordinating Council and most recently with the Northeast Florida Regional uh, Council Economic Development Task Force. Um, the, the task force is... Um, uh, charges to look at the resiliency post COVID in Florida 2030. And um, part of what's glaringly obvious is with an increase in opioid abuse in Putnam County, um, there's a direct correlation to um, child abuse and, and not just from a physical standpoint, but the emotional um, uh, effects that it has. And um, I'll put this out there. My wife and I are actually going through adoption classes right now. Um, and and you, you really get an eye opener from the classes when you start looking at the different forms of abuse and it starts with the emotional abuse that the kids suffer because their parents are getting higher because they lost their job and they're stressed out and they're drinking or whatever. But um, I, I empathize wholeheartedly with you and I hope that this commission can take a proactive stance in getting some of this stuff corrected in the, in the years coming because if we don't correct the root problem, um, we're not going to correct the, the uh, issue with, with uh, child endangerment and child child abuse so thank you very much for you thank you thank you very much thank you okay next on our presentation will be mr willie wright and if y'all will come up mr. 
and meet me at the podium. Mr. Wright, I've got a few things to read and then I'll turn it over to you. Okay. Mr. Dillard, okay from the hospital. To honor and recognize Willie Wright in special appreciation to the service of Putnam County through his 50 year career at Putnam Community Medical Center slash HCA Healthcare. Willie Wright, or Mr. Willie, as most people know him, began his career in Putnam Community Medical Center on March 8, 1971. During his 50 year tender at the hospital, he served in many roles, including ED technician and most recently transporter for surgical services. As Willie celebrates his momentous 50 year career milestone and well-deserved retirement this March, the team at PCMA, I mean PCMC, HCA Healthcare and Putnam County Board of County Commissioners wish him the very best. While he may no longer walk the hall, hospital halls, offering a helping hand and a kind word, he can rest easy knowing that his legacy will endure. And this is a special recognition given to you this 23rd day of March 2021. Thank you, sir, for your service. <laughs> Come say a few words, Mr. Would you like to say? Go, go ahead, Will. If you want to. And then we're going to have you come up with your presentation and get a picture, okay? Thank okay. you. Uh, I'd just like to say thank you to all the county commissioners for being there for me when I was doing my, uh, on my career, and thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, hang on. <laughs> Mr. Oh, I'll be brief. First, I just want to say thank you to all of you for recognizing Willie. Uh, I've been in the hospital industry almost 30 years now, and this is the first time I've ever had the privilege of recognizing somebody with 50 years of service to the same institution. I've had some with 45 years, but never 50 years. Uh, you know, we heard a lot when you were talking about other folks this morning about people that give back to the community. This is the example right here that, uh, that can be set for a lot of people around here. We appreciate everything Willie did over his 50 years. I think somebody at the hospital put it best. Last Monday was the first day in the history of this hospital building out here that some, somebody has walked into the hospital when Willie Wright has not been an employee. So I uh, appreciate you all recognizing him. It's a well-deserved recognition. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Rawl? Mr. Willie, I remember working with you at the emergency room when I was a paramedic, and you and Kay Seiler were a force to be reckoned with. Um, but it's great seeing you. I haven't seen you in a very long time, um, and congratulations on a very long career. Good job. Mr. Pickens? Mr. Willie, did you um, referee Pop, Pop, <laughs> Pop Warner fo football games? <laughs> uh oh, I think we got a problem. <laughs> okay, no, I, I, uh, I remember seeing you in the hospital. I remember you refereeing uh, many, many, many games. And um, I still would like to talk to you about that holding call on my <laughs> youngest son. Um, but he probably deserved it. But, but that's the thing is, you, Pete, we're recognizing for the work at the hospital. But how long did you referee Pop Warner? 60, 60 years. Yeah. Yeah. 60, so the, 60, zero, 60. 60. Yeah. So those are the things. And I remember you. So and, and uh, you did a great job. So thank you so much for what for every, everything that you've done. Thank you. Thank you, sir. camera now. Terry, you're going to need a little cart to roll around here pretty soon. <laughs> you ready? No, sir. One second. Move to the... No, we're right. Uh, can y'all just move this way on the front row? This way? Just, just a little bit, little bit more, a little bit more. Perfect, right there. Um, actually... Hey, you got me blocked out. That's perfect. There we go. <laughs> I know what you're trying to, I know what you're trying to Ready? achieve there. One, two, three. One more. Thank you very much. I'm going to have camera envy. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you again. Thank you. So Thank you. Thank you. 
Mr. Willie, it just kind of shows that everybody can fit in somewhere when they volunteer, can't they? And, um, and the work that you've done, and we appreciate it very much. And I uh, hope that's inspiring to somebody out there watching today. Next on our list is Julianne Young Holmes. Julie Holmes Young. Sorry about that. Yeah. And uh, Deputy County Administrator for the Countywide Projects Update. Julianne, you have the floor. Thank you, Chairman. Please remember that this project report is not an all-inclusive list of projects that are underway by county departments. It's a list of our top projects that are of most concerns to the citizens, the commission, or administration. With that, we will begin with the animal control facility project. The contract was executed to obtain and evaluate core borings. The contractor is expected to provide a report of those findings within the next 30 days. The Department of Health Interior Building Renovation Project is still underway. The notice to proceed was issued December 18th and construction is expected to be completed in May of 2021. The Melrose Library Expansion Project is underway. A notice to proceed was issued on February 4th. Construction is about to break ground. We are waiting, awaiting permits. The project completion estimation date is late summer of 2021. Parks and Recreation is still working on the Georgetown Park. The pavilion, playground, and picnic tables installation are complete, and we are exploring all other options at this time. The Parks and Recreation has the Floor Home Park Historic Building renovation underway. The Floor Home Historic Association is taking on this project. Volunteers continue to work under the direction of the building contractor, Mike Conroy. The fundraising efforts are ongoing. The project is moving into phase two and is awaiting permits to proceed. The planning department has the comprehensive plan consultant project going. The um, planning commission heard the comp plan at its January 27th meeting and they voted unanimously to send it to the board. The board has since scheduled a workshop and they plan to meet. The planning has citizen serve online permitting project. The contract for services was executed and now into the implementation phase. Internal and external teams meet weekly to review and complete the implementation of the modules. IT is working on the parcel data and GIS information for integration into the new systems. Assuming the data transfer is complete, we are anticipating to go live within the next couple of months. The Fort Gates Ferry Landing Project report was given by Mr. Roberts. According to Mr. Roberts, the Army Corps of Engineers have determined that an archaeological review is not needed. We are waiting on a response from the State Historic Preservation Office to determine if a historical marker has to be placed at the Fort Gates Ferry Landing before progress can move forward. Public Works has the Barden Bridge project ongoing. The notice to proceed was issued on December 18th. Construction is in progress and the estimated completion date is October 23rd of 2021. The Lake Susan Road Phase 2 project the award was issued to Art Walker Construction was made during the March 9th, 2021 BOCC meeting. Staff is waiting on a fully executed document and supplemental docs needed in order to issue the uh, notice to proceed. Public Works has the St. John's Avenue resurfacing Palm Avenue to CSX crossing at the Palaka Fire Department. The City of Palaka interlocal agreement regarding the road reconstruction portion of the project will be presented to the BOCC um, and the design is scheduled to be completed in June of 2021. Public Works has the County Road 310 Bridge Rehabilitation Project. 30% plans have been reviewed and approved by Public Works. The design is scheduled to be completed by March 26, 2021. Septic to sewer conversion project, the design is underway. Public Works has obtained 97% of the required utility easements. We're scheduled to advertise for construction later in the next few weeks, pending the utility easement submissions. Dirt to pave 2020, all three contractors have begun construction of the project. Three of the 17 roads have been completed. Those are Magnolia, Twin, and Cypress. East Putnam Drainage and flooded, Flooding Mitigation Project. The bid documents have been submitted for review to general services and legal. Phase one and phase two work will be in the area in which all TCEs have been obtained. St. John's Avenue Drainage Improvement, State Road 19 to County Road 309C. The scope modification has been approved by DEO. We are awaiting the supplemental agreement from DEO for execution and awaiting for a design proposal from the consultant to extend the project further east. The St. John's Avenue Multi-Use Trail. Plan modifications have been approved by FDOT. Plan modifications are currently underway by the contractor. 
Construction is scheduled to begin after FDOT provides the notice to proceed with constructions. Road restriping and pavement marking projects of fiscal year 20 has been completed. East Lar Lane drainage project, Crescent Lake Shores Drive, the construction is underway. Sod activities are scheduled for this week. Tolls Road drainage project, the construction is underway. Countywide drainage improvements, Public Works is currently awaiting uh, for St. John's River Water Management District's response to the permit determination for this project. All designs are complete and we are scheduled to advertise the 1st of April. South Palm Avenue, Drood Street to Silver Lake Drive, 100% of the design plans reviewed and approved by FDOT and Putnam County. Construction is scheduled to begin in July of 2021. Saratoga Harbor Drainage Project, 100% of the di designs um, have been approved by Public Works and we are scheduled for advertised for the after the permit requirements are complete. St. John, I'm sorry, James A. Long Elementary and Jenkins Middle School safe routes to school. The notice to proceed was issued to, des to the designer on November 5th. 90% submittals scheduled for FDOT and Putnam County review on May 2021. 100% submittals scheduled for FDOT and the county review September 2021. Fiscal year 21 road resurfacing project. The bids closed on March 12th, 2021. Staff is reviewing the submissions and preparing the intent to award. We're scheduled to be formally awarded at the April 13th BOCC meeting. Work is scheduled to be completed by or before September 10th of 2021. Sanitation has the cell 4A construction expansion project. The notice to proceed was issued on February 18th. Construction is underway and is scheduled to be completed by or before September 2021. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Ms. Julianne. Appreciate the update. Any questions for Ms. Julianne? All right, hearing none, we'll move on to public comment on agenda items. This is an opportunity to uh, design to allow citizens an opportunity to bring matters to the attention of the board on the agenda items. So is there anybody here that wants to speak on any agenda item, agenda item that we have? Come up and state your name for the record, and you have three minutes. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Uh, my name is Charles Hewlett. Uh, I didn't hear it on the list, so I'm, I'm, maybe I'm in the wrong place at the wrong time, but trying to get an update on the paving of uh, I forgot the name of the road, Paradise okay. Point Road. Can we do, we're, right now we're talking about agenda items. That, that time will come towards the end of it. So what's the, what's the road? And Mr. Troxell's back there. He can go ahead and get some information by that time. Paradise. Paradise Point Road. Thank it's, you. It's a community. It's, yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Just give me just a few Yeah, minutes. that's fine. I didn't really know what to do. I was told that it was You're going fine. to be on the agenda. You're fine. So. Mr. Turner has a, has a response to you, okay. sir. Uh, Mr. Hewitt, was it? Yes. Uh, Mike, would you raise your hand? Mike Troxell, would you raise your hand? <laughs> uh, Mr. Hewitt, if you would get with him, that would keep you from having to wait through this whole meeting to get this update. Uh, Appreciate we, it. we have been looking at it. We try to do some repairs. We're going to, this not on the current pave list. Uh, real quick. Go right ahead, sir. Go right ahead. It's you not may. on the current pave list for this year. Uh, but we have been looking at it and it's been discussed multiple times. It's a matter of when we can get the money to do something with it. So, um, like I said, if, uh, if you'd like to talk to me about this other, if I, if you don't mind, I'll give you one of my cards and you can contact me to keep you from having to come down here and I'll try to keep you in the loop of what's going on, but it is on the, on the horizon, hopefully. Thank you, sir. Okay, um, any other people want to speak on agenda items only? Okay, I'm going to close the portion of the public comment period. And um, commissioners, do you have anything you'd like to pull off the consent agenda? Commissioner Rawls? I have nothing. Okay, Commissioner Pickens? I have none. Commissioner Adams, that? A. A. Commissioner Turner? I have none. And I have none. The chair will entertain a motion on B, C, D, E, and F. So moved. Move. Have Second. Proper? Proper motion by Commissioner Rawls, proper second by Commissioner Turner, or Adams at? Turner. Turner. Okay, thank you. Uh, any further discussion on those items? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 
Pose, like, sign. Okay, the eyes have it. Uh, Mr. Adams, thank you have item number A. So on item A, I just wanted to, to basically say how much I appreciate working with Mr. Commando and, and the, their law firm throughout my time on this commission. Um, I've watched a lot of government meetings as far as not just this county, other counties. I've lived all over the country and uh, at no point have I ever felt like your office or you yourself have uh, tried to sway our opinions or tried to be a, a leader in the fact of trying to, to make policy. You've always answered our questions concisely and precisely in, in my opinion and I appreciate that and that's, I just wanted to put that on the record. Ditto. Right. Ditto for me too. <laughs> Mr. Adams, would you like to make a motion, sir? I'd like to make a motion that we uh, approve consent agenda letter A. A. Okay. Second. Okay, we have a proper motion by Commissioner Adams. That proper second by Commissioner Rawls. Any further discussion on item A? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, like sign, the ayes have it. We are not going to wait to our 10 o'clock certain on the planning development services. Thomas, are you ready to go with um, codes enforcement on page 173 of your agenda? Sorry to put you on the spot, but we're going to move this forward. That's okay, Warren Commissioner. You said we, we are going to wait until 10 o'clock, correct? Well, no, we're not going to wait is what I said. You, you are. You're just skipping over. We're, skipping yes, over. we're going to yeah. wait until 10 o'clock. Yeah. Okay, I got it. For those items, we are going to wait for 10 o'clock. But for okay. now, we're going to go to Thought item I 7. <laughs> Thank and you. That's not how you heard it. <laughs> I know what I said. I don't know what came out of my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Moore, you have the floor. Let me hear your line here. 173. Yes, sir. The address is 127 Yancey Circle. Property owner's name is Tamar Piermont. Violation was unsafe structure. The original fine amount was $15,197. The total cost of enforcement action was $5,103. The property owner has recently purchased the property. The property is now compliant and the owner is requesting a fine reduction. If the board approves, we recommend the reduced fine to be paid within 90 days. Thank you, Mr. Moore. Is the applicant here, Ms. T Tamar Piramont? No, she's not here. Okay. Uh, Commissioners, deliberation time. Um, Mr. Rawls? I, I would say <clears throat> that, again, you know, for us to remain consistent in what we've done in the past, that we reduce the, uh, the total fine by the administrative monthly cost, reduced by $970, which would be 41.53, I believe. Yeah. Sounds about right. Um, so I'd make a motion that we uh, reduce it to the 4153, is that right? 53. 4153. 4153, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, you're right, I'm looking at the wrong, I'm sorry. 4153. 4153, and give them 90 days to pay. <clears throat> we have a proper motion by Commissioner Rawls, proper second by Commissioner Adams Act to reduce the, the amount owed to 4153 if paid within 90 days. Any further discussion on this matter? Hearing none, all in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign, the ayes have it. Thank you very much. Thomas, you're next again, it's page 177. Yeah, the address is 121 Barter Drive, Satsuma. <coughs> Property owner's name, um, what was her name? Cassandra. I'm sorry, Cassandra Busso. Okay. Violation was unsafe building and unsafe electrical. The original fine amount was $46,705.50. Total cost of enforcement action was $2,295. The property owner has recently purchased the property. The property is now compliant and the owner is requesting a fine reduction. If the board approves, we recommend the reduced fine to be paid within 90 days. Commissioners, any discussion on this matter? Chair will entertain a motion. I'll make a motion that we uh, reduce the total fine to $1,625, reducing it by the 670 administrative fee and giving them 90 days to pay. Proper motion by Commissioner Second. Rawls to reduce the amount to 1625, 90 days to pay. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Adams Act. Any further discussion on this matter? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed like sign, the ayes have it. Thank you, Thomas. Thank you. We appreciate it, Mr. Moore, very much. Clerk of the Court. Good. Well Susan. Good morning. Good morning. Um, Mr. Reynolds sends his apologies that he couldn't make it this morning. 
Um, I don't really have anything else to add, but I did have a quick question. Did you approve item F? Yes, oh, ma'am. Okay, I just didn't hear it. Okay. It was in the first part of the motion. No, yes. I just didn't catch it. Yes. So all that. Um, okay, appointments, board members. I'll start with Commissioner Rawls. I have none. Okay, Commissioner Pickens. I have none. Commissioner Turner. I have none. Commissioner Adams, I. Sir, do you have that gentleman's name? I can't seem to get on my email this morning. For Parks and Rec. No, that I was that submitted the application. And we could do it this afternoon, I guess, right? I guess with me being out She's looking that up. I don't yeah. have any. Do you have any more? No, that would be the no. only one. So we'll How about we come back to that? Sure. Okay. Um, county attorney. Uh, thank you very much for the vote of confidence. I really do appreciate working with each one of you and hope you know that by cell or by office, I'm always here if you ever have any questions. So thank you again. And you know, he, he is right about that, Mr. Commando. You are, um, I call you at night, I call you in the morning. I, call, I text you, are you up yet? <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's, and you're always there, and I appreciate it. And I love your um, your quick responses and your short responses. So I really do. <laughs> I think that was a hint towards me. <laughs> County Administrator, do you have anything you'd like to share? Well, was 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 that last comment? So I would take a record of it and make my comments short, sir. <laughs> <laughs> not it's not necessary. We're not going to gag you, but you're more than welcome to talk about what you want. Uh, no, just want to welcome uh, Commissioner Adams like back yeah. uh, from uh, being out last week. We're glad he's back, and uh, Joe's not here today, Colonel Wells, but belated happy birthday to Joe. And uh, uh, and again, I'm excited to have uh, uh, Mr. Commando and their 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 firm representing uh, Putnam County because it's a uh, it is a good fit for us. And I just uh, want to say thank you to the board for that uh, confidence and that decision this morning, so uh, thank you. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Sarah, do you have that information yet? Okay. Well, we can do it maybe this afternoon then. Yeah. We can, yeah. All right, is that, you don't have any more appointments, so no, we're good on that? No, my email will be working again. Then we are going to stay in recess until 10 o'clock certain. Is this the shortest piece of work?
I'm going to convene our Board of County Commissioners. It's 10 o'clock, and we have a 10 o'clock certain for planning and development. Uh, gentlemen, in the future, though, uh, these are the last advertised 10 o'clock certain meetings we're going to have. They're going to be starting to be advertised at an earlier time so we can move our agenda a little further and faster uh, and get things done. So, uh, Mr. Jim Toronto, you have case number, let's see, SM 2020-002. And please don't forget to read by title only the ordinance. Thank you. Yes, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, ordinance number 20-20, I'm sorry, 2021. Uh, I don't have the actual number itself in front of me. Um, an ordinance of the County of Putnam, State of Florida, amending the future land use element of the comprehensive plan by amending the future land use map to change the designation on 9.65 acres of land from commercial CR to agriculture one or A1, repealing all inconsistent ordinances or parts thereof, providing for severability and an effective date, and it is titled case SM 20-002. If I may, uh, Mr. Chair, this case, the application was made by David and Christina Emerson. They are here in the audience today. The request was to change the future land use. Uh, again, we're looking at the comprehensive plan and changing it from commercial um, to agriculture one on a single 9.65 acre parcel located on Pettit Road. Um, the local zoning district is agricultural. Uh, just to give you some brief background on this property, the request, again, is to bring the parcel consistent with allowable uses and the density um, for that particular family residential area. It's located in an area that contains both commercial and agricultural one uh, future land use. Property to the north and west across Pettit Road is designated commercial on the future land use map, and I'll show you a map in a second. Agriculture one future land use properties are to the east and to the south of the subject property and there are no uh, special uh, flood hazard area and it does not contain any wetlands. So Mr. Chair, this is a picture of it um, looking at the parcel itself with Pettit Road to the west. Uh, the parcel's in a, um, an aqua color. Here's the local zoning. Uh, again, it is a zoned agricultural. That's its local land use. The future land use is commercial, as I just mentioned, and you can see that the commercial is to the west. Uh, slightly to the north and to the southwest. And so the findings and recommendations, staff does find that the requested land use change from commercial to Ag 1 meets the locational requirements for the Agricultural 1 future land use in policy A1939 of our comprehensive plan. The Agricultural 1 future land use is compatible with the surrounding uses and consistent with the, uh, the GOPS uh, or our goals and, and policies of the comprehensive plan. Staff does recommend approval of the request to amend the future land use map from CR to A1, I'm sorry, to AG1, uh, for the subject parcel of 9.65 acres. The Planning Commission did hear this case on February the 10th and in a 7-0 fashion recommended approval to this board. And Mr. Chair, that uh, concludes my presentation. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Jim? Mr. Turner. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Chairman. Uh, <clears throat> uh, if you'll excuse me just a moment, Mr. Chairman, that's a little bit off subject, but I'm, I'd like to start the conversation. Sure. A few years ago, <clears throat> the zoning and the land use map didn't have to match. When the comp plan was first written back in the early 90s, it was promised to the Planning Commission at that time that it, that was not the case that this was like a planning tool. The future land use map was supposed to be a planning tool and zoning was what actually constituted what was going on. And then many years later, they had a case happen that didn't end up coming. And at the same time that was going on, the planning commission was like the ZBOA, it was quasi-judicial. So because that never went to the county commission, the commissioners at that time decided that they wanted all cases to come to the commission, um, which is another subject. But the future land use map at the same time became that you, your property had to match the future land use map and it also had to match the comprehensive plan. We just rewrote the comprehensive plan and we I think it's been submitted for review at the state or something at this point. Soon, and so, yes. um, but even with the new map, as much time and effort was put into it to get it more correct this time than it was previously, it's still not correct. 
there's many, many parcels that lines go through the middle of, for instance, or whatever, and it's like that one we heard last month where a corner got cut off, and so it was no longer an ag, but it was a, obviously an agricultural parcel. Um, when we redo the, the, few, the uh, land development code, can we put some things in there to stop some of this? I mean, I don't think these, and excuse me, Mr. Right Chairman, ahead, I don't think these people should have ever had to come and go through this motion to build a house on 10 acres in Crescent City. I don't think they should have had to do this. Somewhere along the way, our system has become broken, broken. And in this rewrite that we're going through right now, that we're fixing to hire somebody to redo the land development code. Um, I think we need to, to really try to fix some of these issues. Even if we've got to go back while we're writing the land development code and try to tweak the comp plan that we just redid because we didn't catch it all as we went through it. We, we need to stop these kind of situations. Um, like I said, I know you had to do it. I'm not being critical of your department. You're doing it by the rules. The, I'm saying right here on television, the rules are broke. They should have not had to go pay $600 or seven or whatever it was. They should have not had to do all this to go build a house on a clearly agricultural piece of property. I don't know if the answer to that is to allow more flexibility to the director of, of the development uh, department. I don't know exactly what the answer is. All I know is that this system is broken. And this case here shows us why it's broken. The, and I, I don't know these, these people at all, so I, I don't want you to think that I'm doing this because they're, they're close acquaintances or whatever. That's not the case. The case is this should have never had to happen. Um, this is just one of those cases that, that pops up every now and then that the system, in my, in my opinion, the system has misused the citizen. And, I, uh, and I'm sorry for that, no, you're fine. Uh, Mr. Chairman, you're fine. but I, I think that uh, Mr. Troana, when we go through this thing that we're fixing to start with, with the uh, land development code, we need to fix things like this. There was no need for them having to wait three months, four months to be able to start building their house and do all this kind of stuff when there's clearly, clearly, I mean, if this one didn't pass, I would fall out of my chair. So, <laughs> I mean, it, what I'm saying here is, is that this is so blatant that w we need to use this as a learning experience to know that that system is, is broken and we need to maybe fix it as we move forward. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Turner, and thank you. Uh, we do have an opportunity to do better, and we will be doing better. Mr. Rawls, you have the floor, sir. I just want to say amen. Um, I, I agree 100%. I think this is an opportunity for us to um, take the bull by the horn and try to uh, change the way we do business. It's it been very frustrating for me because the comp plan, the future land use maps did not did correlate not. at all. And you know, when you go through and ask Back then, when I was asking Mike Brown, "Can you help me find, you know, some R3 in the county?" and well, there is none. And you know, do we have any future land? Nope. <laughs> so it, and then I, you, know, you print the maps and you really start looking at them. I, I, I agree wholeheartedly, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rawls. Appreciate it. Thank you for having revival this morning, Mr. Turner. Appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, never I know. I, I almost said. for the soapbox. <laughs> yeah. That says amen, brother. It was time. <laughs> it was fine. It's fine. It's fine. Mr. and Mrs. Emerson are here today. Would you like to, the opportunity to speak to us? Please come up and state your name for the record. And what we learned in Tallahassee, if you just want to wave and support, you can do that, too. Because I <laughs> Uh, my name is David Emerson. And Christina Emerson. Good to meet you. Thank you uh, very much for hearing us, Mr. Turner. We appreciate that. I was going to joke with you and say, see you at 1 o'clock at the tea time, but uh, <laughs> I better not. <laughs> um, yeah, we went through this process, and um, uh, we, went, we came to the, the realtor uh, that we used to buy the property. I won't mention her name. I don't think she understood completely how it was zoned. And so uh, then we came to the county 
before we signed the contract, long story short, and we were told uh, by a person there, oh, you can build a house, you can put a manufactured home on the property. Uh, and then we even went to the uh, health department and uh, here, and they said you can put a septic system there. So we didn't get a letter, official letter from the county uh, for that. We probably should have, maybe. Uh, but anyway, uh, we proceeded and we closed on the property, and uh, of course we're wanting to live here now. So we appreciate that. Um, I know at the planning commission meeting, the um, nice lady, uh, the chairman, chairperson, she suggested that she might suggest to you that we could have that whatever refunded back to us. I know the builder or the um, our dealer, Mr. Lake, uh, dealt with this part of it, with the amendment part of it, and I don't know if we can get any of that refunded, if that's possible, but most first and foremost, we want to be able to be live there, and uh, that's let's, the most important thing. Let's get our zoning done first, and maybe we'll go Mr. in that Chair, direction. Thank Mr. you Turner. for hearing us. Uh, Mr. Emerson, I... While I'm emphatically against this, what you're going through, I really am. People like myself that do this for a living outside of being a commissioner, it becomes confusing sometimes. Um, there's, I, I don't see any way for you to know that when you go buy nine acres, not, 10 acres out in the middle of the country that you didn't think you could build a home on it. I don't blame the realtor. Maybe they should have done a little more due diligence, but I don't know that I can blame them either. Like I said before this start, I blame the system. Um, and I, while you may not ever get your money back for going through this because it is the system at this time, at least you can say that you were the catalyst in trying to get us moving in that direction to fix this thing. Thank you. Appreciate that. We can oh, name it after them. Uh, <laughs> I just the Emerson to... Ordinance. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Ms. Emerson, will you pull that microphone closer to you? There you go. I just want to tell you how I felt when I got that letter. Well, I can imagine. I, oh, yeah. I felt like somebody had kicked my stomach in. Sure. My whole mouth the next day um, came out with blisters. Hmm. I'm not a well person to begin with. And I mean, I couldn't, I couldn't sleep. We, we, I lost 10 pounds. I'm already skinny as it is. <laughs> so this is how it's affecting um, myself and my husband too. Because I mean, we, this is our retirement. We're, I mean, we don't want to end up in the street somewhere. Yeah. This is our retirement. And that's how I felt. And I'm sure he felt bad too. So uh, we're trying to get over it. So we're trying to, but. Um, well, Ms. Emerson, this, this, if I may, Mr. You may, Chairman, sir. This, this commission has trying to fix some of this kind of stuff. They have been for the last several years. Uh, we just rewrote our comprehensive plan. We're fixing to hire somebody to redo our land development code. And these are exactly the kind of situations that we're trying to get rid of, just exactly what we're talking about things that are so blatantly shouldn't have happened. You know, I, I could offer my apologies, but it's not gonna help, you know, but, you know, hopefully you can take some solace in that this is going to be a catalyst to move forward to where hopefully we can keep this from happening to someone else. Thank, Thank you, you so Turner. much, Thank appreciate you. it. Mr. Pickens, hang on. Mr. Yeah, Pickens. and I just agree with um, Commissioner Turner, Commissioner Rawls, everybody that we're, hopefully we can fix these. I will apologize, I am the, your uh, commissioner in your district. Um, where you are district one. So we apologize for the inconvenience that you've gone through and and um, If it's all right, I'd like to make a motion. I think we're going to be fine. Thank you Thank I you. do have to open it up for anybody opposed, but after that I'll call on you Mr. Commissioner. Does anybody in the audience want to speak against this? All right, we're going to close the public comment period Commissioner Pickens you have the floor I'd like to make a motion so that we accept the recommendation of the Planning Commission and the uh, Planning and Zoning Department for case SM 20-002 because it fits the uh, consistency with the comprehensive plan and the goals and objectives. Thank second. you, Commissioner Pickin. We have a proper motion. Second. Proper second by Commissioner Turner. Any further discussion on this matter? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. The ayes have it. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Moving on to the next item, public hearing zoning map amendment CPO to C2, case number R21-001. Mr. Jim. Mr. Chair, thanks. Uh, Jim Toronto again, Putnam County, Putnam County Planning and Development Services. Let me get my PowerPoint started here for you. 
I'd like to read this ordinance by title. It's ordinance number 2021-009, amending ordinance number 05-18, an ordinance of the County of Putnam, State of Florida, amending the official zoning map incorporated into Article 2 of the Putnam County Land Development Code, ordinance 2005-18, for a certain parcel of land from commercial professional office, or CPO, to commercial retail, as designated as C2, providing for severability and an effective date, Covered under case number R21-1. Mr. Chair, if I may, uh, the applicant, Barry Duffick, uh, the agent is John Key. The request of the applicant uh, through the agent was a rezoning amendment from uh, commercial professional office to commercial retail, C2. The property is located at 1023 State Road 20 in Interlochen, the southwest corner of intersection uh, 20 and southeast street. A little background for you, the parcel is designated in the future land use as urban reserve. The parcel is approximately 0.7 acres in size, approximately 130 feet of frontage on State Road 20 and 150 feet frontage on Southeast Street. There are no wetlands or special flood hazard areas. It's developed with a two-story commercial structure and it was rezoned in 2003 from residential to, to CPO. This is an aerial for you to see. Um, the property again in, in light blue. Um, you can see the structure that's on it. The future land use, as we mentioned, um, is identified here. Its current uh, zoning district is identified here in this map. And if I may, Mr. Chair, our findings and recommendations. Staff does find that the proposed rezoning to C2 is, one, consistent with the comprehensive plan and our future land use map. It is consistent with the locational requirements for C2 or commercial zoning, and it's compatible with the surrounding uses. Staff does recommend approval of this request to amend the zoning map from commercial CPO to commercial retail C2 for the subject parcel. And on February the 10th of this year, the Planning Commission did hear this case and voted in a 7-0 fashion to recommend its approval to the board. I am bringing their recommendation to you today. And Mr. Chair, that concludes my presentation for R21-01. Thank you, sir. We'll let the applicant now speak. Mr. Key, will you be speaking for the applicant? And in the matter of full disclosure, I know this building very well. Gee, I wonder why. <laughs> uh, when Harvey Insurance sold the building at the corner of 315 and 20, we moved our office there. And Mr. Alex Sharp actually owned the office at that time. And it's a it's a wonderful building and it's a wonderful location. Mr. Key, you have the floor, sir. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, John Key, 415 St. John's Avenue, Palaka, Florida. I'm here speaking on behalf of the applicant, Barry Dufek, uh, and his partner uh, uh, in the business is going to be in there, uh, uh, John Holmes. Um, we, of course, uh, agree 100% with the uh, Planning uh, Commission's recommendation, and we would just ask the uh, uh, Commission to uh, approve that. We're here for any questions you might have, um, but I think we're just kind of putting this zoning back to where it was uh, a couple decades ago. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Key? All right, Mr. Key, thank you. Thank you. Anybody in the audience would like to speak in favor of this application? Anybody would like to speak in opposition of this application? And seeing none, commissioners, deliberation. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Um, on case number R21-001, R21 that's correct number, correct? Correct. Right. Yes. Okay. Um, I uh, find the uh, case in compliance with the comprehensive plan and move to accept the recommendation of the planning commission to approve. We have a proper motion by Commissioner Turner to second. second. Proper okay. second by Commissioner Adams. Act. Any further discussion on this matter? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 The ayes have it. Thank you very much. This has been done. Mr. Jim, next one. Uh, Mr. Chair, this is your last case from the Planning and Zoning Department. I'd read it by title. It's ordinance number 2021-010, amending ordinance 05-18. An ordinance of the County of Putnam, State of Florida, amending the official zoning map for Putnam County incorporated into Article 2 of the Putnam County Land Development Code, Ordinance 2005-18, providing for severability and effective date, case number R21-002. 
Mr. Chair, if I may, in this particular case, Thomas and James Parham are the applicants. Their request is a rezoning of a single parcel from R2, or Residential 2, to Commercial Retail, C2. The property is located in the southeast corner of uh, State Road 207 and Lewisboro Road. The address is 101 East Lewisboro Road, East Palatka. A little background for you, the parcel is designated commercial on the future land use map. The parcel is approximately 0.69 acres in size. Approximately 170 feet are located along State Road 207 and approximately 75 feet frontage on East Lewisboro Road. No wetlands or special flood hazard areas exist and the parcel is currently vacant. Here's an aerial for you, again, much like your former aerials displayed, it's uh, in light blue is the, um, the property in question. As you can see, here's its future land use and its local land use. Mr. Chair, if I may, findings and recommendation of planning staff is that we find that the proposed rezoning to C2 is, first, consistent with the comprehensive plan on our future land use map. It is consistent with locational requirements for the C2 or commercial two zoning, and it's compatible with the surrounding uses. Staff does recommend approval of the request to amend the zoning map from residential two to commercial retail two for the subject parcel. And on February the 10th, the Planning Commission did meet and in a 7-0 fashion did recommend its approval to the board. This is the recommendation, uh, Mr. Chair, that I bring to you at this time. Are there any questions? Thank you, Mr. Jim. Um, any questions for Jim? I, I do. Mr. Pickens. Uh, <clears throat> Jim, the, and I think Joey Froelich asked this question. I don't know if they were to answer it. Were its jog cut out at one end of that property? Is that right away? Where it's not squared up on the, on the one end there towards Lewis Brower Road? Um, Mr. Chair, I don't know the answer at that time. Let me just look at the staff report. Mm -hmm. Let me see if I have I something in there on that. Like just that. give me one second. Yeah, I just see yeah. that. That used to be a bus stop, I believe, so I'm not sure. Yes, sir, I believe it is stop. DOT right away because it does say that um, access permit would need to come to, from DOT. But um, so I would say without further diving into it and actually looking at some official documents, I would say that would be right away. But again, okay. I'm not 100% certain at this time. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. Well, it does look like all four corners have a little piece chopped off. It does. So, yeah. Equal opportunity thunder. Okay. All right. Thank you. Is the applicant here would like to speak? Applicant is not here. Anybody in the audience would like to speak in support of this application? Anybody opposed to this application could come and speak now. Seeing none of that, commissioners, what's your pleasure? Mr. Chairman, with regards to case number R21-002, we find it in compliance and accept the recommendation of the Planning Commission to approve. We have proper motion by Commissioner Turner. I'll second. Proper second by Commissioner Pickens. Any further discussion? Hearing uh, none. Under, under discussion? Yes, Mr. Rawls. Um, I did have a conversation with this individual. They contacted me before they made application. I took them directly to Mr. Brown. Um, that's the only conversation we had regarding the property. Good, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Good, thank you. And it will not affect my vote. Good deal. Thank <clears throat> you for the ex parte communication yep. on that. Okay, hearing none, we're going to take a vote. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Oppose like sign. The ayes have it. Uh, moving right into our next item of business, Commissioner Comment. I'll start to my left, Commissioner Rawls. Um, okay, so <clears throat> the uh, um, subject of, of uh, mental health and substance abuse in Putnam County is becoming more and more recurrent lately. It's being talked about by a lot of different agencies and a lot of different folks in the community. And it was one of the asks um, that I brought up in January. Mm -hmm. And I'm just wondering to see if we can, there's some way we can push it up on the agenda maybe at some point get a, a conversation started sooner than later. Um, there's a lot of players that are been, um, willing to come to the table, um, but I think it's a conversation that we need to be getting started. Um, uh, um, Mayor Watts in Wallachia mentioned the new homes that are coming and you know, you've got a developer down there that's uh, putting in, from what I understand, they have 66 or 69 lots and they're gonna be cranking through um, those things pretty quick. 
So I, I think it just goes to speak to, um, you know, how uh, the position that we're in is a community to grow, and, and we're going to start experiencing this. Um, you know, they have the water and sewer system down there, and I think it's going to be a good thing for them, obviously. Uh, the you know, as far as the other things that come along with it, um, the entertainment, shopping, and that kind of thing, that'll come later, hopefully, for them. Um, still working on the splash pad. I met with um, uh, Kevin the other day, and I've uh, got a, one interested party that's willing to give us a proposal. Um, I think it's going to be far less um, than the other ones, but we'll see. Um, uh, he hasn't uh, submitted a price yet. Um, Can you elaborate on that, Commissioner? The uh, splash pad um, recirculation. The recirculation. <clears throat> um, I went out there and looked at it. Um, one of, one of the things that, that kind of threw me for a loop when I looked at the other proposals was the electrical. And um, I think um, we can perform, the, there's a panel there that uh, is, looks to be full, but it, we can actually put a sub panel off of it. There's a 60 amp breaker in it that needs to be downsized to 30s. There, our lift station is actually rated for 30 amp. So if we took that 60, hit a sub panel off of it, we could run um, according to the, uh, the guy I'm talking to, um, uh, Pentair is looking to bid this. Um, they're saying that we would need 320 amp circuits. So that, that, that's all well and good, if I may, Mr. Chairman. May. Um, the question that I was wanting to ask was: Does it look like it's going to be cost feasible to move it to recircle, recircle yeah. the water and recirculate? Well, we water spent ten thousand dollars in two months on water. I knew, I knew that. <laughs> yes. So yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm hoping it's less like than sixty grand. To be honest with you. Yeah. Okay. But um, uh, so he he had sent me some questions. I went over and took a look at that. One of the and, and one of the other proposals there was a uh, electrical fee of over ten thousand dollars, just electrical alone. I was like, man, that seems excessive. But um, some of the stuff I think we could, if we accomplished in house, it would um, it, or or sub it out, but um, control that cost ourselves and not not um, allow the. Uh, in, First, that's installing the tank and the pumps to do. Um, the comp plan data, I, I, I have a lot of concerns about the comp plan data. I, I hope that we can discuss that before we go approving the comp plan. I'm not sure that um, we should publish the comp plan with the data that's in there uh, without taking a really hard dive into it. Um, there's some in, inaccurate statements that are in there. I think we need to address those. Um, otherwise, we, we could be coming right back and making adjustments later. And um, Mr. Tebow said that you know you can use all the anecdotal data you want. What we're experiencing is not anecdotal. Um, we're experiencing growth at this point. Um, Mr. Overturf said that we have 3,000 new registered voters in Putnam County, 3,000 more now than we did a year for, a year ago. Um, so I, I think we, we really owe it to the public to take a deep dive into that um, before we publish this. Um, the Barden Bridge, um, I've received two videos from two different people and several phone calls concerning overweight rated vehicles. Um, I don't know if there's anything we can do as a commission to. Well, I think um, that got solved. So, can oh, okay. I, would you mind yielding the floor yep. for just a Absolutely. moment, Mr. Say? <clears throat> uh, yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. Uh, at the direction of uh, yourself and the commission attorney this morning, I reached out to uh, uh, Captain Cates of the Enforcement Division for uh, uh, Florida Highway Patrol, who has put me in touch with uh, Sergeant Casey Moore. He's going to be getting me some information back on how we might be able to approach this with some off-duty folks and things like that. They are enforcing out there, but their schedule doesn't allow for them to stay there all day. They're working an hour here, two hours there, or something like that. Uh, so what we're looking at now is getting a cost back of what it might be to uh, put someone out there full-time as an off-duty person to be able to uh, restrict that traffic flow. That would be awesome. Uh, may I say? Yeah. I think that's a marvelous idea, honestly, because... You know, the day we were out there, I, I saw leadership in action. I saw Mr. Suggs and I saw his staff working. All eight cylinders were going. Everybody was there. And, and truly, if that bridge is to be closed down, it disrupts all of Barton. Yeah. And it, it would not be fair. And just for someone to, to initially snub their nose and drive a heavy right. truck over it and, and ruin the chance of the people having a lifestyle out there, it's not acceptable, and I'm sure it's not acceptable to any of us that's sitting here. Mr. Suggs, thank you for that leadership thank and you. reaching out. And please get back with us as soon as you can on what that would be look like, okay? Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman, will do. Thank you. Mr. Rawls, you may proceed. Um, yeah, ju just the, the, the momentary shutdown that we had that one afternoon, um, I got a, a phone call from a gentleman that I go to church with, and um, he wasn't irate, but he did remind me that he had to put an extra 70 miles on his vehicle to um, take his daughter 
uh, to uh, pick her up from school, drive all the way around, <laughs> take her to church, and have them drive all the way back around. And so I, 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 I very <clears throat> much sympathize with the folks out there. So hopefully nobody does anything stupid and causes it to be shut down. And then um, just want to remind everybody that in Melrose on April the 5th, um, we've got a, another town hall, town hall meeting scheduled at Mossman Hall at 6 p.m. Thank you, Mr. <clears throat> Rawls. Thank you. Mr. Adams at? Um, I just wanted to say I was, had the pleasure of going to the fair this weekend. Had my kids there, and it was a, a great experience, and uh, kids had a great time. There's a lot of people having a great time, and uh, I'm glad that we were able to get that moved forward. Um, on a separate note, I've been getting a lot of calls and emails and several, if anyone's watching, I plan to get back to this week because I was out last week, but on this whole biosolids thing. Um, the one thing that concerns me about it is that we leave that decision prior to, it doesn't appear that it would come to us as a board. And I don't know if that was a prior commission trying to take a, it's a hard subject. There's a lot of people, and honestly, my research on it, I don't know how I even feel about it because both sides kind of have valid points and you're reading their opinion when you read on it. Um, I just think we should consider finding a way to make that decision come forward to this board rather than letting it be done by the, the zoning group. And I don't know if that's possible in this particular instance or going forward, but maybe uh, updating that ordinance to have the final say come to the Board of County Commissioners, um, I think would be appropriate in my opinion. Well, it wouldn't, be, let, me, let me clean this up if I can. Zoning, it's not a zoning issue. It would go back to the planning commission if there, no, it would go back to the zoning. They need a special exception. They got the plan. So they, they already had their zoning changed. Right. We did that. So they have proper zoning, but then it goes to ZBOA, ZBOA, but it doesn't just go there. It's got to go to ZBOA and DEP and all kind of different right. agencies, water management, all kind of different agencies before it's going to go back. And I actually, I actually think, um, if I may, you me, may, you, you. Uh, I actually think that ZBOA is different than the planning commission used to be the planning commission was like the ZBOA, it was quasi-judicial. And so what I don't really mind the fact if you, if you wanted to try to do a hybrid type thing to make ZBOA and planning commission both to where the planning commission's decision or the ZBOA commission was completely final unless it was appealed to the county commission instead of to the circuit court where there was a level of appeal in there in case they wanted to go and fight. But um, the ZBOA is a different thing. Variances and special exceptions should not be political. They should not be political, in my opinion. No, I agree. They should be based on the facts that are presented by the staff to the zone to the ZBOA and if you're not going to trust your ZBOA then we've lost this system the county commission isn't the all-knowing they just we I'm not and y'all may all be but I'm not they're not the all-knowing and so you know I think that it has to be non-political which is why the ZBOA has stayed like it has over the years in my opinion is because it just can't come into the fact that if 10,000 people show up, it gets passed. If 5,000 people show up on the other side, it may or may not. So it's just very difficult at that point. So, you know, I, it, there's valid things for sure in what you're saying that, that, um, that these should come to the boards on certain, on certain things, but I just don't know you know, I, I don't know that I couldn't be convinced that it just go back to the planning commission and just be appealed to the county commission if there's an issue instead of us here in every single case and just on 99% of them just upholding the recommendation of the planning commission. So, you know, I, I don't know if that's legal, but I believe it is, but I don't know it to be. I'd have to refer to council, but, um, you know, I think they do that in some other areas. So anyhow, thank you, Mr. And, and I, I have no issue with it if there was an appeal process. That, and is that possible to do an appeal process? If I mean, I, I have two petitions in my email, and I have, I think, 36 emails just looking through because my email just got updated now um, on this subject. And, like, we're not the experts in that subject either. Neither is the CBOA. Um, 
there isn't some expert in that field sitting there on that commission. Um, I think in this particular subject, although it is quasi-political in, in a way, it, I think it's take, taking uh, the easy way out if we don't handle this one as a board, in my opinion. Mr. Adams, that would you allow Mr. Rawls to Sure. Speak? Mr. Yeah. Rawls. I, I agree. And when you said um, appeal, I, <clears throat> you kind of took the thunder out of my sky. But I, I think there, there should be a, a method for appeal, if nothing else, after ZBOA, because this, this is highly charged. And I've, I've gotten the same emails, the same phone calls. I've talked to several folks down there. They're very concerned. Um, and and I, the research that, that I've been able to do, um, I'm not sure if this is even going to be approved by DEP. But there again, um, you, you, I, I feel like we, we should be the stopgap if there's an issue, there is, it should be able to come before the commission. Maybe, not to say cherry pick, but um, a, a, an issue like this, um, maybe it could be uh, pushed to the commission before going to the ZBOA. So, so how would we formulate to make that appeal? Would we do 100 signatures or some requirement from the citizens? I mean, this is a neighborhood thing, really. So it's not a countywide thing. It's it's that group. I mean, how would that appeal look? I guess Terry, no, you're the one that brought up the idea. Loud. Mr. Adamczak, I think what you should do is get with Jim, sit down and have that discussion, and then bring back a proposal to the board of county commissioners. Okay. Now, it might be a hybrid type. It might be, it might be hazardous stuff that we deem comes before us. I don't know the answer to that, but I would encourage you to get with Rich and Jim, and have that discussion and bring something back at a workshop. Um, okay. Because right now, I mean, I'm getting the same emails and I'm going, there is no biosolid situation going on in Putnam County. There isn't. There's no application for it. There's nothing like that taking place. Um, but the perception that it might is happening. And that's the problem we're dealing with. And the perception I was that the it was we going had a, an application. No, Mr. Chair, if I may, um, the application has been withdrawn, it's been withdrawn. Uh, by the applicant. And you know, you currently have an ordinance in 2004 that was passed by this board to, or the, the commission at the time, to uh, give guidance to the ZBOA as to how they are regulated, as well as the DEP. So there is that process in place. But we, the point I wanted to make was that we do not have an application on file at this time. Right. Correct. And you know, and that's what I've been telling people is the fact that you know, until one's filed, what's the discussion here at this point? Because there isn't one. So, Mr. Adams, you still have the floor, sir. Um, oh, Mr. Pickens. I just want to make it. Oh, but, sure. but there is a there is a process in place that the applicant has to follow, correct? Mr. Chair, he is correct. There is a process not only from this county, but from the DEP. He must adhere to, or she must adhere to both. Before that Zoning Board of Adjustment can issue a permit, there must be a permit in hand from the Florida Department of Environmental Protection regulating and allowing that use. And you quoted our ordinances having commissioner input. Explain that process. You said before ZBOA? Well, correct. We have a, a, an ordinance in place to help staff um, guide the applicant through the process with the DEP. And then it would go just to the ZBOA for their final uh, and only approval. After that, there is the courts um, that we have. Thank you. I do have a question. If it gets to the point where he does reapply for the application for DEP and it, it gets approved and then it moves to the ZBOA board, um, how do these individuals that um, are want to voice their opinion one way or other get hold of, can they voice their opinion to the ZBOA members? I was a zoning uh, planning commission member and they, they emailed or whatever. Is that information available where they can can, can send their concerns? It is, Mr. Chair. So uh, part of our process is a notification to the members of the public or the property owners. We not only look at 300 feet from the property line, we're actually going to 1,500. So we're extending it out much, much greater. And we'll also, that, so there'll be a letter that will be sent. There'll be an advertisement in the paper, as well as um, signs posted along the property um, or the the, the, uh, the high points of the property to where the signs are required so the general public can see that there is action going to be taken on that property. And plus, they certainly, many of them already have our information and they can communicate with us or directly with whomever here at the county that we will respond back to them. But okay. Mr. Cherry is correct. Right. <coughs> Thank so you. is it, 
There is an application that was through DEP for another location, correct? In West Putnam. Um, Mr. Cherry is correct. That was uh, for another. That has been discontinued its use, and we've spoken with DEP. Not only the applicant who has stopped, he did not get a permit from the county, right. but DEP is also taking action on their permit as um, there's a need for local requirements, and he hasn't obtained that. So he's not able to move forward. And but has he actively it. engaged in that activity until we found out about it. Is that my understanding? That is correct, Mr. Chair. So, I mean, I think there's holes. So there, there was someone that got the permit from the DEP. They thought they were all set. They started doing the activity. It never came before us. How you guys found out about it, probably assume a neighbor or something. Well, if I may, it was through this process. We asked for all the DEP permits for Putnam County. We found it. We contacted that applicant and spoke with him. And the DEP is on record, or they have been noticed that we have a requirement in place. So moving cool. forward, there is that step that they have to ensure is complied with. But it, it did yeah, if you don't mind, I'll schedule some time with you. We'll work on this. Absolutely. See what we Looking can. forward to that. Thank you, Mr. Thank Chair. you. Thank you, Mr. Adams. Zach. Um, I want to be very delicate here, but I, 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 I agree with Commissioner Turner. We got to be very careful about being a political <laughs> issue. We do have a fiduciary responsibility. And law, people have private property protection rights here in Florida. I'm not going to go into all, much more detail than that. I'm just going to say, you know, um, all of our committees need to be very cognizant of the fact that that, that exists in the state of Florida and, um, and they have that responsibility also. Mr. Adams, that you sell the floor, sir. I'm all set. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Turner. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'd, uh, like to uh, offer my condolences to the uh, Washingtons and the Sands. Um, also, um, I'd like to congratulate uh, Mr. Watts on becoming the uh, mayor of Wallachia. I think uh, he'll do a good job, I believe. Um, the comp plan, I, I believe we should submit the comp plan. The comp plan is a fluid document. If we wait till it's 100% accurate, it'll never get submitted because it's a fluid document. It changes daily. And so until we do that, we can't, until we get a comp plan that's been approved, we can't start on the land development code. And that's where all the meat and potatoes are, is in the land development code. And so um, our current plan, Jim, our current plan for the land development code, is it in this year's budget cycle? Mr. Chair, it is. So um, we do have funding in this budget cycle to move forward. We're working with procurement staff now on an RFP. We hope to have that done soon and then move forward. We're going to need to at least look at, obviously, this year and at least next, if not longer. Uh, we're going to really have to evaluate. It's going to take a lot of time to go through this land development code. There are a lot of people that are going to be involved with it. So at least for two years that we're going to look at for the development of this code. I realize that, but if you don't ever take a step, you're never going to get anywhere. We're closer now than we ever have been. Well, I was asking you, the first step is going to be in this budget year, it we're will. hoping, and then it's going to take a year or more probably to get through the process. In That's correct. In government years, that probably means two years, right? <laughs> so, we're hoping for a great product that can be presented, but there are a lot of players that are associated with this, and we want to make sure. That's the politically correct way yeah, to say I'm gonna, it's going to take two years. I'm going to say it in an unpolitically <laughs> correct way. So I, I think, and I don't know what Mr. Rawls is noticing in the, the data portion, but there's things like First Coast Technical College that don't exist. There's things that should be eliminated from there for sure that, frankly, if we put that on our website, it makes us look stupid. If we publish something that says, hey, First Coast Technical College is one of the the great educational things that we have, assets we have in the county, those things should be eliminated from it before we publish it. Mr. I don't know what Wait, Mr. Mr. Rawls Adams, has, but- Mr. Adams, I did yeah. give you a little freedom there, but yeah. it is- I apologize. Mr. Turner. Um, I don't disagree with what you're saying. I don't have a problem. We had our shot already at changing the, the things and uh, coming up, well, I, we did. We, we, were, we were told okay, that we okay, can well, make I these changes. Mr. Mr. Adams, Adams, we're asked Mr. Adams, that, please. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So basically, if you want if you want another shot at it, then what I would suggest was go and sit down with them and identify these areas that are wrong and change them. I have no problem with that. 
What I'm saying is let's not slow down this process to the point to where it's going to be four years instead of two years to get the land development code fixed. That's the only thing that I'm saying. Um, we started this, this process for the, uh, for the comp plan three and a half years ago, and we just got a working document today, and that's three and a half years. If we don't move this thing forward, things that happen today are never going to stop. They're never going to stop. This county is misusing and abusing the citizens of this county Amen. by not changing <clears throat> some of these things. And if we don't let it move forward, it's never going to change. So that's all I'm saying in my comment is, is let's, we can't start one process without at least getting the other process to a certain point. And that's where we are. So if you see something wrong, go change them. Take them out. Point these out. I'm sure Mr. Truon would be happy to scratch out a defunct organization. I don't, I don't think he needs to bring that back to do those kind of things. But let's just not stop or obstruct or slow down the process because the land development code is what's got to happen. Got to happen. Um, I, uh, I want to uh, take one last comment and just uh, just say congratulations to all the children at the fair that have uh, hogs and steers in the fair this week. They're going through their showmanship. This uh, it's a big learning experience for the children. Um, I'd uh, I, I hope they all do well, and I'd like to personally invite everybody out there to bid on a pig or a um, a. Uh, a steer or whatever at the fair because it is all for the kids when it comes down to it. Mr. Chairman, I'm done. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much, Mr. Turner. And Mr. Frick. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'll add to that. I just think it's great that the fair authority decided to go ahead with the fair. Um, and I actually watched a little bit of the um, heifer judging last night. It was, I guess, live stream. It might have been, you know, watching it from last uh, or, the, or the other day. But um, it, it's, it's really neat again, and that's what the fair is about. So I'm glad that Putnam County uh, stepped forward to, to have the fair this year. Um, on a different note, the Rotary Club of Crescent City has canceled the Catfish Festival for the second year or so, but what we're going to do is on April 3rd, which would be the date of the festival, we're going to cook catfish dinners and sell them for $12 at Winn-Dixie parking lot. So I have tickets if you're interested. Um, or you can see any Rotarian in Crescent City, and uh, hopefully we'll bring back that festival uh, next year. Um, just want to say kudos to Kevin Stevens and Parks and Recreation, and actually Judy Jackson, who is the South Putnam coordinator. Um, this is the second year, I believe, that Park and Recs have teamed up with South Putnam Church, which is a church that I attend, my wife and I attend. And a couple of years ago, we purchased the old YMCA building, which has a gymnasium. And for the second year in a row, they're having a youth uh, girls volleyball um, tournament or a, a teams. And um, 95 girls signed up Saturday. So I think that's fantastic. And I know you can't imagine, but one of the coaches is my lovely wife, Holly Pickens, who, uh, who doesn't want to go back to teaching, but after 36 years, she can't get the coaching out of her blood. So anyway, it's going to be a fantastic program. I say kudos to Kevin and Judy uh, for making that happen and the Putnam County Board of County Commissioners for allowing that to happen. So uh, that's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Pickens. Thank you, Mr. Pickens. Before I go, uh, Mr. Adams, did you have a comment you'd like to finish up with? Yeah, I, I would just like to reiterate the fact that when we were talking about the comprehensive plan, we were asked specifically not to bring up those items that were in the data section that we were focused on the comprehensive plan. So that what came when Mr. Rawls brought that up, so I chose not to go down that path, figuring we'd have another opportunity. So I'm not looking to renegotiate the comprehensive plan. I think the plan itself, we went through it very well. I think we did a great job of it. Just some of these data points need to be updated. Um, I'm more than happy to submit the ones that I see that are errors. I just don't know how we re reconcile that in the end. So thank you. I hear you, Mr. Rawls. <clears throat> so yeah, Mr. Adams said so a lot of what I'm gonna say. At the beginning of the meeting, I asked the question, are we publishing the data? And the answer was yes. We went through the comp plan. When we got to the data, I said, are we gonna go through the data? The answer is no. Um, you list four assets 
under economic development for workforce training. One is the St. John's River Community College. I would agree that's an asset to workforce development training. One of them is Flow Arts. I would disagree that that is an asset towards workforce training and development. One of them is my son's kindergarten, or um, uh, elementary school, the Children's um, Reading Center, and one of them is First Coast Technical. So if we're gonna publish this data and embarrass the public, let's not pay them for what we didn't get is my point. We list um, adult care living facilities that are not adult care living facilities. We list the major employers in Putnam counties, Seminole Electric, George Pacific, and Forest Crows Fernery. Really? Is that the best we've got, those three? We couldn't list St. John's Shipbuilders or Camarco or something like that. So I, I, I think we need to take a, a, a deeper dive in the data. Let's get what we paid for. We've spent over $120,000 of taxpayers' dollars, to my knowledge. Let's, let, let's get what they paid for. Otherwise, we're going to polish this, um, whatever you want to call this, and I could think of several words, but we're going to polish it and send it out, and it's, gonna, it's not going to reflect us currently, and we're currently discussing our comp plan. So that, that's all I'm asking is just for us to take a deep dive into the data, just have a one-day workshop and go through it, or bring it up at a, at a regular workshop, and, you know, but not publish it the way it is now. I think there's just too many issues with it, and anybody, anyone with any level of sophistication will be able to pick through it and say this is garbage. Um, it, it reflects poorly on us you know, as far as um, trying to attract folks from the outside that we might want to come into our, uh, our, our, our county and establish a business. And, and the best we have is those three, th those three businesses. But thank um, you, thank, thank you. you, Mr. Rawls. But I do want to say, I, you know, I do agree that the data sets change. I do think that y the commissioners can avail themselves to go talk to Mr. Jim Toronto, and he'd be glad to massage that document. I'm, I'm sure he would. So it's not even an issue here. And um, when the data does get here, the correct data, we can always amend that. That's not an issue. And that's a, that's a simple fix. So, you know, let's don't make a mountain out of a molehill. The, the bottom line is I was so pleased at this, at this commission that we went page by page. And, and truly looking back, most of us were on the same agreement mm -hmm. on the things that we were going on. It's not that the data sets. I mean, if you want to make some changes, change those. I have no problem with that, and this board has no problem with my, that. My point is, is when but I look at the let's, I, got the I look at the data. I got that, Mr. Rawls. But let's, let's you, whoever has an issue, Jim will be glad to sit down with you. Let's clean this document up as best we can, knowing that data sets are going to change coming forward as soon as we get that, and we'll change that document then, okay? Mr. Adams, I'm going to give you the last, well, no, Mr. Turner, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, I want to clear something up, Jim. When we had that discussion about the comp plan, we didn't discuss data, but it was made the comment by Brian Teeples that the data would be inserted, the proper data, before it was transmitted. Did I miss something? Did I dream that up or what? Mr. Chair, I don't, I don't remember that, sir. I, I, we can go back and look at the video and oh, see exactly what So you're what we actually said. considering turning this in with no current data whatsoever? Because that wasn't my understanding of the process. My understanding of the process was, is we passed the goals and objectives and policies of the comprehensive plan. That was going to be submitted, the goals, objectives, and policies. But the current data was going to be inserted, and they were still working on it. Did I miss something here? Because they, if not, they're absolutely correct. I, I know that we're going to use the data analysis, but it's not being transmitted as part of the document right. as a reference to that. So I, I don't remember that conversation, sir. I don't. That's something that we can go back and look at. Um, I know that our consultant is still retained. I, I just... I don't know the answer to that at well, this time. Well, the data has to be part of what we hired him to do. Commissioner he, Rawls is correct. He did provide data to us. We had issues with some of the data. Some of it's been corrected. If there are other issues, we'll be glad to review that okay, and so make those changes. What you're saying to me, then, is the data is still in process. The goals, objectives, and policies have been submitted, but the, the current data has not been submitted, the old data, but the new data is being worked on. Is that what you're telling me? I don't have an answer to that. I don't know the answer to that without speaking to the consultant. I just don't know where we are specifically on that point at this time. I can have that answer to this commission by the end of the day. Mr. Chairman, I, I absolutely I agree with everything that's been said here this morning. I will ensure as county administrator that the data points that we're discussing here this morning 
uh, should be updated and included in the submittal, uh, not wanting to hold anything uh, back or delay anything. Uh, the, the Mr. Chair or uh, Ms. Uh, Commissioner Turner's point, uh, the goals and objectives have been discussed. We will certainly look at the data points, and I'll rest assured, uh, Mr. Chairman, we will address the, these issues with the uh, with the consultant as well as Mr. Trumiano and get this submitted uh, as soon as possible. I may be incorrect, but I believe the goals, objectives, and policies can be submitted for review without the data. And I think and that's, that's what's that is gonna correct, sir. Been done. That, that is right. correct. So that shouldn't hold that process up. So once it's been reviewed, if they okay it, and they probably should, if they okay it, then and then they'll come back with their ear report. I'm assuming on top of that, and then we'll have to make some suggested changes, or do we want or not, or some of them won't be suggested. They'll just be, you need to change <laughs> this. And so once we get through that process, by then we should have data. I just want to ensure that our consultant because I was under the understanding, and if I'm incorrect, I'll be the first to say it. I'll stand right here on TV today and say <laughs> it. But I'm telling you right now, that data needs to be updated and placed in there by the time we go through the ear process. I, I, agreed, Mr. Chairman, absolutely. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Can you bring Chairman. us back and answer at our workshop today? I can. Thank you, sir. Mr. Adams, that final final. Yeah, and I, I apologize. I meant to do this through my comments, but I would, an appointment, I would like to make an appointment for Parks and Recreation. Um, we did clear up the name. It's Dan Dixon for Parks and Recreation Advisory Committee for District 5. So you would like, okay, hang on. So you'd like to appoint Dan Dickerson as? Dan Dixon, yes. Sir. Dan Dixon on the Parks and Recreation, that's fine. Let the record show that's, his, that's Commissioner Adams' Act appointment, and that's taken care of. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Turner, are you done? I'm done, sir. Thank you. Okay, I have a few things I'd like to say. Uh, was able to attend the Boy Scout, no, yes, the Eagle Scout Honor Guard for Miss Hoffman Sunday. It was a very nice uh, presentation by her. Um, it was very well deserved and remember those uh, young ladies earned their Eagle Scout in record time almost and um, they're off to a promising future. Commissioner Rawls, I want to thank you for the work on the splash pad. I really do appreciate that. Uh, I want to hear something from um, Julianne Holm, Young, Holm, Holmes Young. Sorry, I keep getting those words mixed up. Just but young, um, I'm just excited people. about the surplus equipment. You would wonder why I get so excited, but it's kind of been my thing for many years to get this up and moving. And I want to say that I think Nicole has done a fabulous job um, of trying to get Again, we're going to crawl before we walk and walk before we run. And um, but Julianne, would you give us a report on where we're at? Because the bidding ends today. That's so. correct. Bids close out at 6:20 p.m. this afternoon. We wanted it to close after work in case anybody wanted to check it. As of 8:30 this morning, we had generated $31,903.01 in that auction. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. that, I mean, that really is good. And I've I've signed up so I can look and watch those bids going on. So Excellent. thank you very much. And Nicole, thank you if you're hearing us today. We, we appreciate that. That's gonna be a great future there. Um, gentlemen, on April 1st, we, have, we had a Tri-County uh, Commission meeting scheduled. The meeting got changed from St. Augustine to this facility um, for that at 8.30 in the morning. Uh, now the meeting has changed a little bit too where the commissioners from St. John's County did not pass a resolution to leave the county. So they're only sending their chairman and their administrator and their attorney. And then uh, Flagler followed suit with the same, and they're sending their vice chairman, their administrator and their attorney to the meeting. Um, more than, I don't wanna change if y'all wanna come, I want the whole board there if, you, if you're possible to be there. I apologize for the inconvenience. Uh, St. John's County was going to cost money and uh, this facility doesn't cost us anything to use it. So we immediately moved it over to this area and that caused a little bit of disruption. Um, that's not saying that in the future we can't meet. They were just unprepared to make that move that quick. So uh, again, April 1st, 8.30, we're gonna have a meeting here and whoever wants to show up, it can show up. Uh, FACT will be here and bring snacks for the group 
and uh, we will talk about items that you've already been briefed on and you've got an email on Mr. Turner. Uh, just very quick, uh, I think we should be very careful in this whole commission going and ganging up on the one or two from the other two counties. No. So <laughs> I think that it might be in our best interest to let our chairman and our administrator meet with their chair and vice chair and administrator, at least until we get this moving in a, in a good solid direction. Sure. Thank you. And, and again, if that's the, if you're, if you're here and you want to come fine, if you don't, I fully understand. And I apologize for the in for the inconvenience. You said it was April 1st, correct? It is April 1st. And last but not least. You know we have a Northeast Florida Regional Council meeting today. No, they canceled that meeting for, because of the Tri-County meeting. Okay. They canceled that. I have, but, I have to take um, it calendar. Okay, so. I'm not so sure they won't restart it due to what just took place over the last few days. <laughs> so <laughs> we'll we're, gonna, see. we're gonna be here at 9 a.m. We're gonna be here at 8.30. 8, okay. 8.30. Change yes. that right now. Because they have to go. And commissioners, I want to bring up something, and believe me, I don't want to throw a gasoline on a fire, but I do want to uh, say this. Mr. Suggs, as you well know, is being considered to be um, city manager in Daytona, city of Daytona Beach. Um, that doesn't sit well with me. I will want to keep Mr. Suggs here for a long period of time, but he is in the top three candidates at this moment in, in the process. He will be going back down again this weekend for another round of interviews. And I want to be able to lead the discussion on retaining Mr. Suggs. I don't expect that to happen today, but I do think that we need to broach the subject. I, I did yesterday uh, to see if he would be willing to stay, if we'd be willing to have a conversation. I don't want him to get an offer that he can't refuse, and I want him to feel um, very strongly that he is welcomed here that can stay. So I would ask the board at this point if we can look at a future date that we could have a meeting to talk about things we could do to incentivize Mr. Sugg's ability to stay as our county manager. <clears throat> so I will open the floor up for that discussion. Mr. Pickens, did you have something? I, I would, you know, I'd be amenable to that too to you know set up a date where we could discuss that um you know as this commissioner i would because i don't want him to go anywhere e any either so um would the tuesday the 30th would that be a good date for everyone maybe in the afternoon i know mr commando has a morning uh meeting but maybe in the afternoon let's say later afternoon three o'clock ish would that be a good time to meet Mr. Chairman, I think that by then it's going to be too late, one way or the other. I think if this is something we're going to do, we need to do it a lot quicker than that. Okay, let's look at our schedules. Um, I got my calendar up. We can do it on the 29th, which is a Monday, or we could do it on Friday the 26th, but it does give very whatever the board would like to do. I don't think they're gonna make up, I think the 29th would give us time to have that discussion on Monday. Mr. Suggs, I hate to put you on the spot, do you know when they're going to be meeting? Mr. Chairman, the uh, information has been supplied to the uh, three remaining candidates is that they're going to do uh, interviews this coming Saturday morning and they, uh, they're going to convene your commission that afternoon for a discussion. Now what that discussion leads to, I, I couldn't tell you, but that's their schedule at this point. So Mr. Turner is very much correct that by Saturday it might be too late. Um, we're gonna be here, you got a meeting with Seminole on the afternoon this coming Thursday. Mr. Turner, what date would you like? Do you have a date in mind? Well, Thursday's out for me, Mr. Chairman. I've got doctor's appointments and my wife can take to the doctor on Thursday. What about uh, Friday morning? How does that look? Friday morning, other than from 10 to 11, I'm good. We could do it at 8.30 or Friday afternoon or any other time of that day. Let's do 8.30 Friday afternoon. Is that good for Friday everybody? Friday morning. Is that good for everybody? Friday. 
I can reschedule my stuff. Thanks. Rich, can you come down 8.30 Friday morning? I'd like for you to be in that meeting if possible. Is it possible we could do that at 9? Because I don't okay. have an aid scheduled early enough that I can get here at 8.30. Sure. Sure. Can I go look at my yes, calendar here? We're going to take a three-minute break. Mr. Pickens needs to look at his calendar real quick. Convene our meeting, Mr. Pickens. What did your schedule look like? I could also do it Thursday morning. Okay. I, can, I can't do it Thursday. Um, I can do it Friday morning. Friday morning. Friday morning at eight forty-five. I think I can choose what we're meeting for tonight. Eight forty-five. Okay, eight forty-five on Friday. Bridge, how's your schedule look? All right, we'll do eight forty-five, knowing that we might need to take a break to accommodate some scheduling and we can come back and finish up at that point. So we'll go from 8.45 to close to 10, and if we need to come back at that point, we'll come after, we'll take a little break at that point. Is that okay? We got time to public notice it, and um, that'll work out well. So, um, all right, good, thank you very much. And that's the end of my comments, so we're gonna move to the public comment, miscellaneous portion of our agenda. Is there anybody in the audience have filled out a blue card? All right, if they haven't filled out a blue card, that's fine. If they, anybody would like to speak at this time about public comment for miscellaneous items. Hearing none, this meeting's adjourned. Thank you.